Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stocks All Day with Dr. O'Day. In today's episode, I'll be discussing a couple of trades that I made over the weekend, um, and also the emergence of my portfolio into a margin trading portfolio, as well as I'll be discussing why I actually switched from E-Trade to Robinhood this weekend. Um, and so stick around, check that out, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. As always, please note that this is my own trading. This is not meant to be advice to anyone about stock trading. If you trade stocks, you do so at your own risk. If you follow this, you do so at your own risk. This is just my $1,000 journey. So this is Robinhood, and as I mentioned in my brief intro video, I actually made a switch over from E-Trade to Robinhood. I'm still in the middle of that switch because I still need to shell, sell my Shopify stock over in E-Trade, but I have deposited $1,000 into this Robinhood account this weekend, and that $1,000 I intend to be like margin money um, because I've been intending to trade on margin with this account. Um, and right now I'm not eligible for margin trading. So I'm actually, and by the way, margin trading is when you borrow money um, to increase your buying power and thus increase your returns as well as your losses. And so for me, I think that margin trading is going to be good for me because this is a smaller amount of money than my main portfolio. If I ever need to, I can pull money from my bank account. I can pull money from my other portfolio to cover any of the losses that I incur. Again, this is a trial thing. I'm just seeing, you know, if I borrow some extra money to increase that buying power, if I can increase my returns. Again, I don't suggest doing any of this, but for me right now, this is the right call. Um, again, because Robinhood requires that you, and I think actually federal regulations require that you have $2,000 in your account before you actually go forward and buy on margin, which means that you're borrowing money again to increase that buying power, you need to have $2,000. So my first thousand of margin, I decided to just take from my bank account. Once I hit two grand, once I you know double my initial thousand dollars, I'll put that money straight back into my bank account. Again, I'm buying on margin right now. Again, borrowing from my own bank account. So I've got a thousand dollars that I put into here this weekend. I also have a thousand dollars over in my E-Trade account that I will eventually move over to this account. And you might be thinking, okay, well, if I have $2,000 in here, I can technically buy more on margin. I'm not going to do that. I'm not that risky yet. Um, so I, I am not going to use this to, to buy on additional margin. Um, I'm just using the thousand from my, my own bank account here. But this is Robinhood. What really drew me to Robinhood is that you can buy partial shares. So what kind of sucked, and, and I've actually missed out on at least $15, which, you know, it's not very much, but you know that that's only in three trades I've missed out on $15 because in each trade you can only buy in set share amounts. So if this if I have you know one that eleven hundred dollars and the stock costs one thousand dollars, I can't use my full buying power on that stock. Whereas with Robinhood I can just say okay I want eleven hundred dollars worth of this particular stock and it will give me 1.1 shares of that stock if it costs a thousand dollars. And to me that extra buying power the fact that I can buy fractional shares that's fantastic especially right now um, when the account is fairly low again I would have already made an extra fifteen dollars had, had I done that. Um, and given that I've made about $120 total in that other account, that's a decent increase in the, in the amount that I would get there. But this is Robinhood, tells you the full value of my portfolio right now. I got a free stock just for joining. By the way, there's a link um, to where if you sign up, you and I can both get a free stock. So feel free to use my sign up code there. Um, and so that 674 is just coming from that. I'm gonna sell it as soon as I'm eligible. I think that you can sell it three days after getting the free stock. Um, so this weekend, I actually invested in Ethereum. That's a cryptocurrency. And I never, ever, ever thought that I would invest in crypto. But for the reasons that I'll discuss here in a little bit, I decided to jump into it. Um, and the interesting thing is I said that I did this over the weekend and you're seeing that the price is changing right now. Crypto doesn't sleep. 
So crypto trades 24-7, unlike the other stocks that we see um, opening here in about 26 minutes at 9.30. Um, so that's been a fun weekend for me. Um, but you can see, I actually bought this Ethereum at $517, it's at 604. So I've had a heck of an increase and I expect that that's going to continue to skyrocket. I bought in at the perfect time with Ethereum and I'm going to tell you exactly how I made that decision now. So again, Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. It's not something that I advise trading. I, again, this is not meant to be advice. It's meant to be a detailed account of what I have done over time to see my money grow or decrease. Um, the more likely is that my money is going to decrease, especially if I keep doing stupid stuff like buying cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, the, my biggest issue with it, um, one, it's highly volatile. Um, it goes up all the time, it goes down all the time. Very, very, very volatile, very, very, very dangerous. But really the reason that I think that it's so dangerous is you can't set a stop loss on it. So with my other stocks, I can say, okay, this is the level at which I want this stuff to sell. If I made a bad buy, then this is where I want it to sell. And I'll talk a little bit later um, in my next trade about setting a stop loss, how I chose my stop loss. I'm still learning exactly how to choose my stop loss. But unfortunately with cryptocurrency, with Ethereum, you can't set a stop loss, at least in Robinhood. Um, and that's a, that's a really big scare. It's a really big turnoff to me. Um, but I thought that I was timing this pretty well, so I decided to put $500 into it. I bought one share of Ethereum. So, and, and actually it, it caught me off guard when I couldn't put a stop loss. I, I accidentally actually sold the stock um, for a second trying to put a stop loss on it. It's really confusing that you can't do that. Um, but here's how I decided to buy Ethereum. So, I actually deviated from my other strategies because I had been reading up on Fibonacci retracement strategies and I decided that I wanted to try to find a stock um, that was currently experiencing a Fibonacci retracement just to kind of experience it, to get my feet wet in that particular investment strategy. And what that strategy is, is that you're looking for a stock that is trending upward. So you're looking for a stock that's trending upward. I noticed that Ethereum was doing that, but you're also looking for a fairly substantial decrease. And what's happening is that bulls are buying the stock. They're buying, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying. But then some people sell because they want to pocket the profits. They say, okay, this is as much as I'm going to be in it. I'm going to sell. And that's where we get these little drop offs right here. So what we can do is I, I'm going to actually zoom in just slightly on what's happening over here. And I want to draw out some Fibonacci retracement levels. And Yahoo Finance is fantastic. You can just draw these and you can see exactly what the heck is happening here. And when you draw these lines, there's no real right answer. Um, you want to basically start this at the, at the start of the trend. Um, so I could start it here was kind of the start of a trend, here's kind of a start of the trend, down here's kind of the start of the trend, here, um, I could technically do it here, you know, there's, there's not going to be a perfect answer. Um, I, I decided, you know, I, what I like to do is I, I kind of start in a few different spots, but what you do is you click right at the lowest point, and then you go up to the highest point at that thing. And then it gives you these levels. So you get a 38.2 level, you get a 50% level, and actually that's, that's not where, so that would be about as far back as I would draw this one. Um, but where I decided to draw this was a little bit closer to where the trend really started picking up steam. So you could do it right here to here, or you could even do it right here to right there. And that's the one that I ended up going with. And you can see these Fibonacci retracement levels, what you're searching for is you're looking at the 50%, you're looking at the 61.8%. So kind of the theory behind this is that some once a, when a stock is trending up, people are eventually going to sell off and pocket the profits. However, 
it's interesting that it kind of follows this trend where this 50% level becomes important and meaningful and the 61.8% level becomes important and meaningful. So what people say is typically you don't wanna buy into anything that's less than 50%. So once it kind of hits this 50%, that's a great resistance line. And probably the stock, if it's going to continue its uptrend, is going to hit that 50% retracement level and then it'll bounce back up or it'll do so at 61.8%. And so those are kind of the two most meaningful levels. Some people buy in at 38.2. From what I've seen, from what I've read, that's the risk is too high there. Um, and people suggest probably more buying in around the 50% level. And what you're looking for is right after it hits that 50% level, you're looking for a signal that it's going to start retracing, that it's going to start actually assuming that upward trend. You want to put your stop loss just below the 61.8 level so that, you know, if you are wrong that you get out. Again, Ethereum doesn't allow for that, but I would have loved to do that. Um, but what I noticed is I saw a little bit of a morning star pattern. I would have liked this to be a little bit further offset from that, from that red bar, but I did kind of start to see a morning star pattern there. Um, and it did tend, it kind of rebounded away from that 50% mark. And so that's when I bought in. So I bought in right on 11.27. And since then, my, that money has skyrocketed. So in just a few days, that stock went from 517 to 603.44. Um, again, this is, you know, one strategy. I'm not saying that you should follow this strategy, but it's something that I was interested in. Um, and I'm definitely going to follow this strategy again as I see it start to happen um, with regard to stocks. So what I did was I bought into that at 517 and I haven't actually decided where I'm going to sell this one. Initially I thought maybe I'd sell it at 600 um, but actually the trend is is very strong. We've got three white soldiers right there um, and so those those are you know looking like it's going to continue that bullish trend. Again we had a little bit of a morning star pattern there indicating that it's probably going to finish its bull or continue with this bullish trend. But the other thing was a lot of people were actually saying, so a lot of analysts were actually saying that if this stock, um, I'm gonna get rid of the Fibonacci levels there, but if this stock could kind of achieve greater than 570, that it would probably continue to skyrocket. And it did. I mean, yesterday it blasted past 570. So I'm expecting that, and I'm just gonna continue to monitor this. Um, and, and I'm hoping that this continues to go up, but as soon as it starts to signal a decline, I'm gonna go ahead and sell. These, these are further um, you know, evidenced by the MACD signaling a buy right there. Um, again, it rebounded away from the simple moving average. So everything right now is telling me that this is probably going to stay bullish, especially in the very short term. So I'm going to continue to monitor that and I'll let you know when I sell that stock. So thank you all for checking back into Stocks All Day with Dr. O'Day. As of right now, I have almost probably around a 30% increase in my entire portfolio on that initial $1,000 investment. Again, now I'm trading on margin, so I hope to increase that. But for the month of November, I started right at the beginning of November. November is now ending. A 30% increase is pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with it. I hope that you all have a great rest of your day. Let me know if you have any questions.